Good afternoon and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susie Pennycook and as you know, I am really, really avid about vintage sewing machines. I'm a member of quite a few Facebook groups um, where us vintage sewing machine addicts um, get together and communicate. Obviously, we're always very excited to um, showcase our latest finds and machines and things. One of the things that often gets asked um, is, bought this machine, really pleased with it, but the case is grubby and what's the best thing to clean it up with? These machines are typically left in garages, attics, basements, sheds outside. A lot of them are inherited. They may have sat in the back of a, a sewing shop when they've been part exchanged. So sometimes the cases can be very, very grimy. I collected this machine a couple of days ago. I've now decided that I'm going to clean the case up. This one um, housed a 401G uh, Singer, but this case is quite typical for Singer for any um, 1950s, 1960s vintage sewing machines. This is off a full size machine. It's not too bad actually. Um, there are paint splashes on the top grime could be nicotine always a bit of pen mark and stuff like that um successfully the last time i cleaned a machine case i chose a particular product after trying a few various solutions on the uh, facebook group there's been a couple of products mentioned that people tend to use obviously you try the soap and water you try the washing up liquid and stuff like that one thing that does um, frequently come up as being successful, and I have a bottle of that here, is this product. Now this always sort of gets attention because when people say, I use elbow grease, elbow grease is fantastic. Obviously they're not thinking that it's product, they're thinking it's you know all to do with physical effort. There is actually this product called elbow grease. I'm just looking actually at the active ingredients. It says less than 5% cationic surfactants and also contains perfume and lemonade, which gives it a lemon fragrance, I suppose. So that's one of the things that I'm going to try. The last time I did one, I ended up resorting to sugar soap. Sugar soap, as it says on the bottle, Cleans and prepares surfaces prior to painting, removes grease, dirt and nicotine. You have to dilute that in, you know, hand hot water. But it did a very, very good job when I used it on the 285 case, which was a similar finish to this. It may be a little bit coarser, the 205 case. It did a grand job. Now, something that other people are also um, recommending are these white eraser sponge pads. You can buy these in Aldi, they're about, I think about £1.60 for six sponge pads. I bought some for other purposes. My daughter specifically uses them to clean algae off the inside of the tropical fish tanks. Um, it says you just have water, you don't actually need any um, products with those. So I'm going to try those. Um, like I say, you don't need, you're not supposed to need any chemicals or anything like that. So to make the test fair, what I've done, uh, I did this in advance, that's a Blue Peter moment, isn't it? I actually um, used masking tape to divide the, the back of the case into three sections. So this side, which is to your left, is going to have the sponge pads. The middle is going to have the sugar soap and the side to your right is going to have the elbow grease. I'm going to use a separate cloth for the elbow grease and the sugar soap, so that makes it fair. And I've already diluted, um, as per recommendations, the sugar soap into hand hot water. I'm going to clean each of the three sections very fairly. And whichever comes cleanest, I will then do the entire case with. I have taken some before shots and I will get some after shots for you. So bear with me, it may take a while. I'm going to give it a go.
This case is actually a vinyl finish, um, so it will stand up to some moisture. Um, some of these cases do have more of a fabric finish to them. It's like a fabric overlay. Like I say, this is like a vinyl cum leatherette, um, which will tolerate more water than a fabric case. In the future, if we get a fabric case, I will do more of an experiment. But like I say, this is purely for vinyl type case. So it's looking cleanish. There's a few stubborn marks there, which are, they're moving. But because it's grained, obviously you'll need to go left and right. sure if that's a scratch or whether it's paint if it's a scratch I don't want to go too heavy on it just in case of damage the, the vinyl hmm. now that's only one one application and one quick wipe over obviously it might need two or three you can see um, there is some discoloration on the cloth not sure if that's the color coming off the vinyl or whether it has been stained with nicotine grease, anything like that. The elbow grease does actually say it's all purpose degreaser for fabrics, metals and plastics. The only cleaner you'll ever need. The reason I bought that was I do a lot of quilting. And I once got a spot of oil off a vintage sewing machine on a quilt that I was making. It was like, oh no, how do we get this off? It was very visible. And that was recommended and it did the job great. So let's look. That's the elbow grease. That's you know a control as it's not had any treatment at all, and it's certainly looking a lot cleaner. If that was the only <laughs> only result I was going to get, I'd be quite happy. So let's go on to the middle one. Use a clean cloth because then you can't say oh, it was the elbow grease that got it clean, not the sugar soap. You should have gloves on with this really, but. Um, I'm not one of these women that bothers too much about inhales and the hands and stuff. Maybe bring that out a little bit, okay, make it a bit wet. Quite a stubborn mark there. Okay, I'm going sideways because that's the way the grain runs and up and down. I mean, this, I'm just really going to show you the first application so that I then choose which product I'm going to use to do a thorough job of the case with. And like I say, we've got some before shots and we'll get some after shots. So you can see the finished result. I'm obviously going to give like the, um, you know, the brass work and stuff a clean as well. So again, that's made a good effect if we look at the non-touch panel and the middle panel and the outside panel I can't see probably as well as you can see on the camera which is actually working out the best um, pop that in there now this actually should have been wet just give me a second and I will just go and run it under the tap back just grabbed a plump pot off the windowsill improvisation is the name of the game isn't it so right so let's get this one go i've used these pads actually um on things like i've got a white gloss kitchen and i've used the pads on my kitchen cupboards the reason i like them for that is um they go on quite wet um, but it seems as though when you rub them in one way, it puts on the water, the moisture, and when you rub them the other way, it sort of cleans it off so it doesn't leave any smears. Now, this side of the case, which is on your left, has got a few scuffs. It's obviously had most of the wear and tear, so we can't judge whether these um, pads clean that up because it's not going to, that I'll need a touch up if anything. So again, try and give them all the same treatment for fairness. So 
So side to side, up and down. Just discoloration coming up. These pads, they are great, but they do disintegrate after a while. They don't last for very long, but like I said, they're not expensive. They work out about 25 pence each. Again, you can see that it's beginning to disintegrate now. The bits that are left on the case are off the pad. So, I don't know if you can see the difference. I'm gonna actually pop behind the camera because I'll probably get a better view. Hmm, it, now it's, to the right is dry, to the middle is still a bit damp, and obviously to the left is wetter. So I'm going to leave you with that for a few minutes and let them all dry out um, because it's only if we dry them out that we can tell if there's a clear winner. Just move that a little bit closer. One thing I did notice, let me pop that there while it's drying. Just actually looked at the active ingredients. Like I say, the sugar soap is less than 5% anionic surfactant. There you go, I don't know if you can see that. Just interested, this is because of my nursing background and I'm always looking at um, drug ingredients. Looking at this one, less than 5% cationic surfactants. So, basically, I'm thinking that the elbow grease is actually a solution of the sugar soap. So, the advocates of the elbow grease and the advocates of the sugar soap are probably um, supporting the same team. That's obviously handy because it's in a trigger spray and you don't have to dilute it. That one, you've got to get your hands in it really, unless you're wearing gloves. So I'll come round and see how we're getting on. Still a little bit damp, so I'm going to leave you with that. Looking as though there's a streak there, it isn't, it's actually a little dent, but... Um, Hmm, it's looking okay. So yeah, I'll just leave you with that while it dries out completely. Okay, so we're back and the case is now completely dry. Just move these out of the way so we can get a better view. Um, I'm not sure um, about the verdict, to be honest, it all looked pretty good. If anything, I would say maybe the elbow grease side. If we take off the masking tape carefully, then that might reveal what it was like before we cleaned anything. There you go. Take off the masking tape now. A little bit of moisture seeped under the masking tape, so therefore it, it does sort of look darker anyway. Oh, it's hard to say. Now bearing in mind, like I said, the, the elbow grease solution has actually got the same active ingredients um, with added lemon as the sugar soap. But I would pretty much say that if anything, anything um, to the naked eye rather than the camera I would say that the elbow grease um, probably is a slight winner. Out of all three I think I would be happy with either compared to what the case was like if we just turn it around again then you know you can see how dirty that is it could have come off with a million and one other products, I'm not sure. Um, but it certainly has cleaned up. And for now, I'm going to carry on with the elbow grease. And I'll get some photographs of when it's finished and we can compare it. So later on the same day, I carried on continuing to clean the whole case with the elbow grease. Um, I've actually used a product called Autosol on the brassware, which has come up with a really good result. I did go over the case one final time with um, White Spirit just to see if I could get rid of any of the paint splashes. They, they're not bad, um, they just 
you know, obviously it's sat under a staircase or something while well, somebody's been painting the ceiling. Um, a few of them have come off, but there are still a few remaining. I don't want to go scrubbing at it too much because there's a danger that you can actually take the surface off the vinyl. But I think overall, um, for a sewing machine that's getting on for 60, 70 years old, um, the case is cleaned up very well. Um, I'm really pleased with it and I hope that you found this um, wee tutorial quite informative. Thank you very much.